What's up, everybody? Welcome to TCB. Today's episode is one of my favorites so far. Our guest today is Michelle Tillis Letterman. If you don't know Michelle, you should, because she's awesome. Michelle was named one of Forbes' top 25 networking experts and is the author of four books, two of which include The 11 Laws of Likeability and her latest, The Connector's Advantage. We're going to talk about that one today. Michelle's a regular in the media, speaking on leadership and workplace effectiveness. She's appeared on most of the networks you watch or listen to and in many of the publications you read. When she's not doing her thing in front of audiences, she's an expert chauffeur to her kids, an average skier, and a skilled walker of her two rescue dogs. I think you're going to love this one. So let's get right on into it with Michelle Tillis Letterman on today's TCB. Welcome to Sky Team's The Corporate Bartender. If you work in HR or make people decisions in your organization, this is the place to be. Now pull up a stool, belly up to the bar, and join us for The Corporate Bartender. Oh, welcome, everybody, to Corporate Bartender, episode number 66, the 9th of December. Can you guys believe it's December already? It's bananas. Yeah, ben- crazy. bananas. I we've been talking about this. Ruby and I were we're on a, a workshop today, and we were talking about this concept. It's it's the it's the fastest slowest year of all time. I think. <laughs> totally. Can't wait crazy. till it's over. <laughs> right. Right. I, yeah. I think we're all agreed on that. Well, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for coming today. Today is going to be today is going to be a fun day. We've got a special guest. Uh, we've got Michelle Tillis Letterman with us today. There she is. She's dancing. All right. Um, so uh, I don't think we have any newbies today. Just looking through. Looks like a bunch of the regular crew. Mm-hmm. Um as I do every week, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to plug Morag's article again this week. If you guys haven't read it, you should read it. Morag got some really good feedback from from a person this week. And I, I don't know, it was one of those. I think Ruby and I both cried when we read it. Um, Morag, can you talk just for a second about about how this article is coming across, how it's being received, the power of it? Well, that's what's kind of blown me away. I did it because it was for my own getting out of my box, messaging to the universe. And um, I have received, I've lost count now of the number of personal messages. And yesterday I got a great big long message from somebody who said that this article had landed in their feed at just the right time because they're currently struggling with a toxic environment and how it's impacting them physically, emotionally, mentally, all of that head, heart, core that we learned when we had an earlier episode. And that it, she just appreciated the vulnerability that I'd shown in sharing my story. And so she and I are going to have a, a catch up call next week to mutually support each other through it. But that is the tenor of, for me, it's not just me, but for the people who've read it, oh my goodness, I'm going through something else and the world is not going to end if I own up to this and do something different. It's been huge. Yeah. I, it, I love I love that, and I I love the the way in which you put it out there, and and how how nervous you were about putting it out there because it's it's very unmorag, it's very unBritish to be that open <laughs> with with the entire internet, and it's it's been really interesting. You know, Ruby and I did a, a workshop today um, where we essentially talked about the silver linings of 2020, um, all of the, the the learnings, the takeaways, the things that we're doing differently that we just wouldn't be doing otherwise. And you know, I think when when you look back with that sort of deep introspection, it's it's pretty moving. The group today was was pretty into it, right, Ruby? Yeah, yeah, I think they hadn't really gotten to that point yet to get there. And, and, and I think we're getting to this point in the year where we're starting to look back and just the, the blessings that are coming out. We didn't necessarily use that word today, but the blessings that are coming out of it and the, just the growth that would not have happened had we just kept plodding along in the way that we were. Yeah. And, and how they're growing as leaders and becoming more agile and flexible and thoughtful about the whole person it was really the gist of it. And what a great learning for all of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Thanks, guys. All right. Um, 
the weekly <laughs> the weekly pump of the bartender network if you're not on there get on there i even did a really annoying graphic woo get the app put it on your phone you want to see you want to see that again woo bam one more time <laughs> boom <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Ben Whiting has just entered the waiting room, guys. Ooh, let's get Ben in there. Oops, sorry. Hey, Eric, I muted you on accident. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I tried to hit admit and then it disappeared and you were right under it with mute. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I thought I, th I thought Laurel paid you five dollars. I, I was going to say, I, I, wish I had that control. <laughs> Oh, all right. Couple of a couple of, of quick headlines uh, on on the theme of connection, because of our guest today. A couple of Forbes articles for you guys. Um, the first one here is called "How to Make Networking Human Again," and I thought this one was really interesting. It was written by uh, Diana Rao, and she she talks about how networking as a concept has become kind of sales focused. Um, you know, we go to conferences and stuff and, and we, 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 we collect connections. We go on social media and we collect people so that we can, you know, pitch our stuff to them. And, and she has this concept called deep networking, which is sort of the antithesis of that. It's more of a, of a holistic whole person approach. If you're going to take the time to get to know anybody, get to know them versus just collecting their name and contact information so that you can try to convince them to come to the corporate bartender. I don't know. <laughs> um, the second article here today, I thought was really interesting too. Um, how networking can help women in STEM thrive during the COVID crisis. Um, talking about building uh, mentoring networks, m networks that align purpose, passion, and service, um, identifying those inherent uh, female leadership traits and, and, and connecting with people on the basis of that. Um, we talked a few weeks ago about the number of women that have left the workforce and are kind of out for this time period, right? Like maybe not coming back, maybe staying home to do the, the, the family thing. Um, and, and that's, that's a problem. That's not going to be a good thing. So I thought this, this idea was interesting and wanted to share it with you. And if I can build on that, Eric and I yeah. did a keynote last night for um, the Society for Women Engineers, and we had several on there that were transitioning back into the workforce, having taken yeah. a break to raise families or were in transition looking for their next opportunity. And I'm not joking, they had not considered tapping into that network, and now they're doing that and tapping into us to open doors. And so this is key, that sense of belonging and getting beyond, like the first article, getting beyond the job title to the human, this is what's going to make the difference. And Michelle's the best person to talk to <laughs> She is the best person to talk to us about this stuff, right? All right. Well, let's, let's do that then. Let's I'm welcome the love. <laughs> <laughs> let's welcome Michelle Tillis Letterman to the TCB audience. <laughs> I'm very awesome. impressed with the tech. I just, you know, <laughs> with the get the app and the sound effects. Oh, I did the app thing just to be annoying because I figured Laurel would hate it. <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah, I do. I do hate it. <laughs> so but she has a, the app. Right? <laughs> Nice work. So for those of you that don't know Michelle Tillis Letterman, she is a speaker, trainer, coach, author of four books. And you can see them behind her adjacent to the window. One, two, there they are. There they are. Um, she's been recognized for for the 11 laws of likability. That was her first biggie. Um, she has been named by Forbes as one of the 25 professional networking experts to watch. She's been on just about every TV channel you watch. She's worked with some really big companies and some really, really innovative startups. Um, so welcome, Michelle. Thanks for coming to the corporate bartender. Thanks for having me. I wish I had a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, that's what we do here. Uh, mine's not <laughs> as interesting. 
Awesome. Well, hey, so why don't you, if you don't mind, just share a little bit about yourself. Tell us about your your career journey. How did you get to where you are today being a best-selling author of four books? And be sure to include any weird or, or funny jobs that you've had along your path. I was going to say that journey is pretty convoluted, but if you want to know about me, I am an adrenaline junkie, travel is my vice, and love, love, love animals, and forgive in advance if the dog barks because can't control her. Um, that's me. And, and, you know, it's interesting. You talked about deep networking and I talk about relationship networking. And one of the things I always say is don't talk about what you do at first. Talk about what you love to do or, you know, what you'd like to do or anything else that is not just the job, because that's not what we connect on. We connect on, you know, common interests and common people and passions and places and causes and experiences and all of those things. So if anybody scuba dives, uh, jumped out of a plane, um, loves travel, uh, wants to know how I was able to bottle feed a Siberian tiger cub, just reach out. I'll tell you all about it. Oh, yeah. (laughs) If you go to my professional Facebook page and maybe at some point when you guys are talking amongst yourselves, I'll pull it up and share. But um, there's an album called Me and the Animals. And, uh uh-oh, you're going to make me do it right now? I'm not that fast. (laughs) No, no, no. I'm just prepping you. you, Whenever you're ready, you can pull that up. All right. Let's see if I can actually (laughs) talk and click at the same time. Um, (laughs) But I have a little album on my Facebook page of all of the animals, like, across my life. So let's see if I can actually get to them and share. Here it is. Yay. Me and the animals. And I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I won't, like, take you. I'll just kind of scroll. Um, oh, my goodness. This pig's name is Kevin Bacon. <laughs> um, yes, that is me nose-to-nose with a full-bred Siberian tiger. Um, that mud is because this timber wolf basically jumped on me, and I fell down, and somebody was pulling it <laughs> off of me um, with a big smile on my face, and then I was playing with the rest of the wolves, all muddy. Um, let me see if I can get further of them uh kangaroos wombats even lizards snakes monkeys in my hair Uh, my dog when i was in high school please don't mind the 80s hair (laughs) that's and the 80s tank top that's pretty awesome too oh that that might be 70s (laughs) so um and this is there's a pair there's birds on your head head. tank top by the way (laughs) You have to, right? Um, There's a monkey actually putting his arm down my shirt. My husband was not too (laughs) pleased with that monkey. Um, And now you get to see my kids, lemurs, right? So. um, Oh, my gosh. Yes. Okay, what was your favorite one? (sighs) Um, God, you know, holding a Siberian cub, there's kind of nothing like that. That and the sloth, because the hug you get is just <laughs> better than just about anything else. Like a sloth just holds on, right? It just holds on and it just- It's an impression. It, it does this, it like holds on to you and then every once in a while it goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And it, otherwise it's just holding on. So, so that's me. Um, now- Wow. <laughs> so M- Michelle, it's, it's funny, right? I mean, that, that was- one of the coolest things, Ben, that was, that was almost better than your episode right there, just because of the animals. I know, I know. Um, getting to that level of, of knowledge, right. Is it's not how we're programmed when we meet people. Like if we're at a conference and we meet people, we tend to ask two questions, right? What questions do we ask? I don't want to hear when, it. When we meet people, you guys know it, right? Where are you from? What do you do? And, and that's what company what we, do you work for? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's all surface level stuff. So, you know, how do we, how do you get past that? How do you, how do you dive in and, and get to the level where you learn that the person you're talking to has bottle fed a Siberian tiger cub? <laughs> okay. So I love this. I, when somebody asks, what do you do? I say, well, I can tell you what I'm doing this weekend. Mm. Or I say, well, I can tell you what I'm dying to do or what I love to do. And I just change the question which is oh. what I did to you, right? You asked me about my work history and I'll tell you, I promise I'll get there, but I would rather you guys know who I am and what I care about because when you link into me and when you connect to me, we now have something that we actually want to talk about. 
because you have enough information about me to have a real conversation. Um, and so when you are asked those questions, I want you just to change the way you answer it. I am terrible at saying what I do. I don't have that little tight elevator pitch thing. Ugh, it makes me kind of yucky. Um, I can tell you what I told my kid what I do because he had to do it for a school project. And he's like, mom, I don't know how to explain what you do. He was about eight years old. And I said, tell people I make um, people play nice in the sandbox. Right. <laughs> that's, that was my answer to him. Cause that's what he could relate to. I said, I help people work better together. That's, that's what I do. And there's lots of ways that. you can do that. But what do I care about? I care about people playing nicely in the sandbox. That's oh my God, awesome. Jenny, every time you move, I just see his face screaming at me. It's <laughs> 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 I think I think when 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 my daughter is about that same age, she had to do the same thing. And she told her class that um, I type on my computer and I talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> my coworker told my daughters they were really little at the time. Your mommy makes people cry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, human resources. Yeah. <laughs> but then she gives you a lollipop afterwards and a hug. <laughs> right. Exactly. I can especially relate to Morag's comment. I take the junior high out of the workplace. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right? good. I like that one too. Um, so I, I can tell you a little bit about the convoluted journey. Um, you know, I don't know if they're interesting jobs, but I was the only woman on the trading floor and Ooh. I was the only woman on a global venture capital team. And I spent 10 years in finance and I consider myself a recovering CPA. <laughs> um, a recovering CPA. Re recovering. You can take the girl out of accounting, but I still audit my bookkeeper and I still find mistakes. I, you know... <laughs> Uh, I'm still photographic for numbers, which drives my husband nuts. Literally today, he's like, I need to go to Summit Medical Group and pick up the DVD of the MRI results. And he's like, you know, I need I need to call over and make sure they're open. I'm like, 973-436-1380. And by the way, that is the correct number if you call it. <laughs> did, you, did, you, did, you, did, you did you tell him that they're open till six? Open you till eight. <laughs> <laughs> I said, but I'll call anyway to make sure that you can pick it up instead of me. And, um, you know, so, so I really spent my first decade of my career in finance. And if you think about, you know, finance in the nineties, uh, I wasn't allowed to wear pants. Um, mm. I couldn't, I mean, forget about my nail polish is Hanukkah colored right now. I got the blue and the silver. Um, I wasn't allowed to wear red, like all the same color, like, so um, it was a time that wasn't friendly to women in finance, and I was really frustrated by how I was communicated to, how I was led, how I was managed. I, I was like, this sucks. And um, uh, who was it who said they make them cry? Was it Jenny? Jenny. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I did too. I, I didn't want to or mean to, but you know, I was managing people at the age of 22, what they were thinking, I don't know, but I made, I gave feedback and I made somebody cry. And I, I now realize like, I need to keep people from making all the mistakes I saw and all the mistakes I made. Mm. And that's kind of how it came about. And I started my business back in 2004 while I was still full-time in finance. I started teaching at NYU in their business school while I was still full-time in finance. Um, also while I was pregnant with my first child, you know, cause I wasn't busy enough. <laughs> Right. Getting get, got to have something to do with those minutes of downtime that you had. Yeah. Oh, and I was also putting my husband through business school at the same time, you know. Perfect. No pressure. Perfect. <laughs> so how did you get to the point where you decided to write this book? You, you had had some success with the 11 Laws of Likeability. What what compelled you to do this one? Oh, um, so um, I know that that's Ben, but. Um, Morag's biggest fan as well. Oh, look I, at I that. love that they've changed names. <laughs> That's awesome. I wish I could. I bought this book before I knew you. I just, I read about the description and was like, I want that book. And it's great. It's fantastic. Highly recommend oh, it to everybody. <laughs> thank you so much. Like that just makes my day. Um, honest, honest reviews on Amazon. Always appreciated. Um, <laughs> but you know, the 11 laws like ability came about because I kind of grew up having a very polarizing personality. 
people loved me or they hated me. And, and, you know, you're Brian Fink sometimes on this show. Yep. Um, Brian went to the same high school as I went to, and he can tell you that, um, people had strong reactions to me. <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't know why. I didn't know what it was I was doing. And so that's mm. where the research started in really trying to understand how, you know, how likability forms, how relationships form, what enables connection. And so that was the the first book. And the latest book, The Connector's Advantage, is actually a follow-up to that book because I moved from kind of thinking about the conversation and what you do before, during, and after the conversation to really thinking about how do you move from doing this thing we call networking to being a connector and somebody who prioritizes relationships in everything that they do. And so I did different research here. I did this survey with the university trying to understand the elements and the mindsets of a connector, thinking I had this thesis of, you know, connectors have certain ways of being and thinking. And then people responded to the survey and there was very little differentiation. And I was like, oh, shit. now what do I do? <laughs> I don't know if we're allowed to say that on a podcast, so I just mouthed it. I think you guys saw what I was, sugar, honey, iced tea. You can say whatever the fuck you want. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, and I had to completely change the premise of the book. The book was originally called The Connector's Club. Because it was like mm -hmm. this elite group of people who had this way of, of doing things. And what I realized after I researched, anybody can. Anybody can have these behaviors and attributes and become a connector. And I was like, that's awesome. And I completely changed the book. Wow. So even hardcore introverts can become connectors? Hardcore introverts are some of the best connectors I know. They what? actually have, yes, 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 yes. And I do a, a section in both books about introverts. Um, I think this one was good news for the introverts. And this one I said, the introverts edge. Because... <laughs> First the thing, by the way, show of hands, any introverts? Well, look, about half the hands. My, mine should not be up. I, <laughs> <laughs> I am like off the, the other end of the charts. Yeah, um, that's Lori. Lori's like that. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you're an ENFP, aren't you? Um, ENFJ. Yeah, oh, okay. Oh, I am a J. Yeah. 10 years in finance. Remember. She oh, remembered, the, she remembered the doctor's phone number, Ben. <laughs> oh yeah uh, very very fast paced i was an entj when i was in finance i actually flipped to an f and i think i i became i was a tj because i had to mm -hmm. and it was against my grain that's fascinating so um good guess though what the hell was i talking about <laughs> <laughs> introverts and extroverts thank you <laughs> <laughs> See, authenticity, it's the first law of likability, <laughs> just be real. Um, so when it comes to introverts, they have some innate advantages in connecting. Um, one of the mindsets of a connector is to be social and curious. And I, I'm very clear that I don't mean social butterfly and I don't mean life of the party. I mm. mean a willingness to be social with one other person and to be curious about connecting with that person. That's what that mindset means. And I talk about finding your format for doing that. A lot of introverts will knock themselves down because they don't do that thing that extroverts do, and they don't have to. And that's not where connection forms. Mm. Connection forms in the one-on-one. -on -one. That's where introverts excel. Connection forms because you are listening, you are probing, you are um, really trying to understand what you're hearing. Introverts are a hell of a lot better than that than extroverts. Now, wow. I would say each side has a strength, and each side has something they need to learn from the other. So where extroverts need to get a little bit better at the listening and bringing information in and maybe calming ourselves down a little bit so that we enable people to see past the big, right? That's part of what was polarizing about me. It's my unique charm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and introverts really need to think about the share, right? So mm -hmm. I'm a TMI. I give, I give it all away. You've already kind of experienced that with me. I'll tell you everything. And I need to make sure I'm taking time to pull in information about you as well. I, I need because you have not seen our '80s hair. <laughs> I can get that '80s hair back within seconds. Just saying, <laughs> if, if there's no product, it gets real big. <laughs> Humid day over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so really it's about, you know, where, what are the strengths I'm bringing? Let me leverage them. Let me rely and trust and know that I've got this and introverts also not off-putting like introverts don't tend to be polarizing. 
right? Mm. Extroverts can, not all, but they can be. Um, and so, so where's the stretch, right? So the introvert might just have to think about when they're posing those questions, pose questions that you actually are willing to share about as well, right? So, mm. you know, if I was somebody who didn't want to tell a lot about myself, if I'm talking about animals, I feel more comfortable because it's a passion or if I'm talking about skiing or if I'm right. So find the thing that brings out that energy from you and try to get a conversation going there because it will be easier for you to share as well. So are, are, are people born with this ability to connect or is it something that you can develop, you know, in your, in your book, you have seven levels. That seems that that's a lot of detail. So, <laughs> <laughs> how, you know, if I don't feel like I'm very good at it and I want to become good at it, is that something I can do? Of course. That's the whole reason I changed the book. <laughs> um, and I was so excited that it was accessible and it is truly accessible. And yes, maybe there's some people that, their brains naturally go this way, um, but it doesn't matter if it does or not because all of this is is learned and and there's seven mindsets that we talk about and uh, I'll list them and then you guys can choose which ones you want me to talk about and I actually have a little three minute quiz that you can take to figure out where you fall on the spectrum. So, um, which you want me to start with the spectrum, the levels of the spectrum, or the seven mindsets you pick? Uh, spectrum. Okay. So none of you are non connector, right? You wouldn't be here if you were a non-connector. Don't even believe in the value of relationships living in the basement, right? <laughs> Hillary liked that image, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um, sometimes we could be in that first stage of emerging connector. We know the value of it, but we just don't have a confidence. We don't have a comfort. We're not putting ourselves in, out there. So, But we're emerging. We see the value. A responsive connector is one that is getting incoming requests for introductions, incoming requests for assistance, and they're responding to them, but they're not initiating anything. So the okay. first lever to pull is to start to initiate. When you start to initiate, here's how I can help, or here's who you might want to need, or hey, I'd like to connect with that person. Can you put us in touch? Then you are an acting connector. And that is a great level to strive for if you're not there yet, right? That, that might be as far as you need to get. Mm -hmm. The connector's advantage is the idea that Whatever it is you're working on, whether it's a job, a promotion, a client, a referral, happiness, health, and yes, I have statistics around those two, memorized, can't help it, uh, <laughs> that you're going to get there faster, easier, and better as a connector. So the further up the spectrum you get, the faster, easier, and better those results will become. Now, the other lever you can pill is the depth and breadth. So when you go deep, deep in a geography, deep in an industry, right, I know everybody in HR, Right? Mm -hmm. Or I know everybody in Colorado, or I know everybody in um, this company. So when we go deep, that's called a niche connector. When you go broad, you can become a global super connector. So that's super broad, right? Crossing your country's borders is global. If you're within your country, then you're a super connector. If you have connections up and down the ladder, across industry, across geography, across function. Right, across demographics, across um, educational levels, like the diversification of your connections is so powerful. It's, and it's so relevant right now when we think about, you know, this, this, the social injustice and, and looking for inclusion. I wrote this book and it came out in 2019. And a full chapter of the book is called, actually a full section of the book is called Expand and Diversify Your Connections mm -hmm. and How to Be an Inclusive Connector. And, and, you know, there's little habits they can pick up and I'll, I'll give you a couple quick ones. When eventually we go to conferences again, because I believe in my heart it will happen. Um, <laughs> look around the room you're in and have a host mindset. Think about the fact that you can be the host of that room and make other people feel welcome. Go up to those like that, that look most out of place. Right. So you're the bartender. Yeah. Right. You, you welcome them in. I have a friend who does this, um, and he says, I look for the person who looks the most out of place, the most alone, and I go over them and I start talking to them. Wow. I have a rule at a conference that I can, I can sit next to one person I know, but on the other side, I have to sit next to somebody I don't know hmm. and bring them into the conversation. That's um, awesome. So having a host mindset, oh, sorry, I could keep going. You, you talk. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> so I, I, I took the quiz. Um, and, and this is me. The initiator. 
Yeah. So um, so that's the networker quiz. That's not the connector quiz. Oh, so I have it. two. I know. So that's the <laughs> quiz based on this book. I did a quiz for each book. Hold on. I will get the link for you. Because we know you can talk and type at the same time now. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> um, nope. Hold on. See? Connector quiz. There it is. Okay. All right. And where's the chat? Oh, there's lots of things going on in chat. I should be watching that. <laughs> This is a chatty bunch, Michelle. Okay, so if I'm missing anything good, just tell me, because I, you know, read, type, talk, it's just too much for me to handle. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'll, I'll shift my question, right? So the the networking styles, the connecting styles, how do they go to, do they go together? Um, they're, they're, they're similar, but... It, it does not relate to the spectrum, right? So right. The, those seven levels of a, of a connector, um, you can be any one of those levels when you take okay. that quiz. Um, so they're telling you different things. Um, I didn't even know that networker quiz was still out there. <laughs> well, because when, when I got it, I was like, well, I don't recognize that word, but I'm sure there's method to the madness here. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I love a good quiz because when you kind of, People love to hear about themselves and to learn about themselves. And if I can kind of say, okay, so this is where I am. These are what I'm doing really well. And this is what I can do to grow. Cause I'm all about the stretch. I'm mm -hmm. all about, well, great. I'm really happy with this. Now what else or what's next? Got it. So yes, Laurel, that is the right link. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Thanks, Laurel. <laughs> so oh, I sent mine to, to just to Morag. I didn't realize I was on a direct <laughs> message. I thought I was, I thought I'd sent it up there already, but thank you, Laurel. <laughs> Morag got it. <laughs> She's taking it right we need now. It the most of us all. <laughs> <laughs> so Michelle, you know, 2020 has been a, a wacko kind of year. Um, when you think about networking and connection, what has 20 taught, 2020 taught you about that and what, What's different? <sighs> right, yeah. Just, just you know, <laughs> it's almost over. Um, you know, I actually, I'm somebody who takes on the mindset of abundance, right? So mm. I didn't list all the seven mindsets of a connector. I'll, I'll say them really fast because they're kind of coming in. Connectors are open and accepting. They have a clear vision. They believe in abundance. They trust. They're social and curious. They are conscientious and they have a generous spirit. And I have to count to make sure I get all seven. Um, and, and so we've started to touch on a few of them, but what you're talking about right now to me is the mindset of abundance and, um, and focusing on, on why there are good things coming out of 2020. Mm -hmm. And for, for me, I think one of the great things coming out of 2020 is is this, um, and this internally, because what happens with this internally is that the dog comes in and the kid comes in and I can see like really cool things on Lori's wall. And, um, you know, you know, and I get to just peek into your rooms and I'm like, you know, that those are really nice paintings or that's a cool pillow. Or, you know, I'm wondering, you know, Mariah, is that a real background that like you took a picture of something that is yours and then you put it behind you? It is what I modeled my garden off of. See, so it like was, it was the inspirational picture. It doesn't quite look like that, but pretty close. But isn't that cool? Because it's giving us some insight and some way for us to connect. And what I think is going to happen as a result is that organizations will hopefully have more connected cultures. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things mm -hmm. that we talk about is creating connected leaders and connected cultures within our organization because people don't quit organizations. They quit people. Yeah. And if we want our people to stay and we want them to be engaged and we want them to be loyal and then we want them to be productive, the number one driver of engagement is the belief that management values their people and shows that value to their people. Mm. And when you have high engagement, you have high productivity and people, um, organizations with high engagement outperform those without by over 200%. Wow. So, you know, it's very simple to be a connected leader. You just have to think two things, care about the people and care about the things that people care about. That's it. Wow. Show you care about them as people and show you care about the things they care about. Everything else that you do will fall into one of those two buckets. Huh? 
Yeah, well, we know you care about animals. We know this now about you. You know, it's funny. Ruby and I were, were we were doing this 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 workshop today, and we mentioned it earlier. Um, just talking about the levels of connection and the things that have come out of this time that have been really interesting. And I love what you said about, you know, sort of seeing into what's going on in this little square. You know, we used to protect the square. This was the business square. If we were on a, if we were on a, on a, on a video call, well, if we were on a video call last year, it probably looked like this. This is how we did video calls last year. Um, and now and now we're on video calls with video on and, you know, our cat puts its head in the screen. Our kids run through it, right? Dogs jump in your lap. Laurel does it from the floor. She did it on the floor <laughs> last week or two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. And it's hard to embarrass me, but Eric came out with a phrase that just absolutely rendered me speechless. <laughs> it's hard to do. <laughs> it is. <laughs> But what I what I loved about all of that, all of those experiences is that we know you in a different way. You know, last year, if I knew you were a parent, I, I got that concept. But this year I saw your two toddlers crawling all over you. And I have a whole different appreciation for what you're experiencing right now. And my ability to empathize with you is totally different. That's the other word I was going to bring up. I do think we have greater empathy. And we talk about, you know, bring your whole self to work and all those phrases. This is bringing our whole selves to work because everything is here right now. Um, and so I think and I hope that that empathy, that understanding, that connection continues beyond the box. And, and I think that's something really positive that can come out of 2020. I also think that 2020 has given us a great excuse to connect and reconnect because of the social isolation and um, the, the physical distancing. Yes. Good choice of words. <laughs> you, you know, you don't have to be socially distant. You have to be physically distant. And, you know, there's a, there's a welcoming of people reaching out more randomly. And mm. I you know, I have been more in touch with my friends from business school, my friends from college, um, you know, even my neighbors, like I've had them to my backyard. I have, I've been able to like make about four pods in my backyard and they bring their own drinks, you know, <laughs> and we just sit outside and, and we have a little fire pit and it's great. And, you know, I had people from college drive two hours to sit in the four pods in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I think it's given us that time to strengthen connections that are already there, to reconnect, um, and to have that family focus. I mean, I can give you loads of negatives, but with a mindset of abundance that I yeah. really try to focus on, when somebody says, how you doing? I give the big sigh, and then I say, feeling grateful. Mm. I love it. So if, if we could do one thing to become better connectors in this crazy, wacky 2020. What's the one lever we could pull? Okay, so two things came to mind. It's, it's fine. I expected that. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm never kind of going down the, the, the straight and arrow. Um, so one thing that we can do is um, when we're in a conversation, ask the question, you know, what are you working on? What are you focused on? Who do you want to connect with? How can I help? What do you need right now? Any of those questions, you pick the one that you like, but ask that question and be able to answer that question. Ooh, okay. Yeah. So asking that question is the spirit of generosity, that mindset of generosity and being able to answer that question is having a clear vision because you will not get faster, easier, better results. If you don't know what results you're looking for. And that result doesn't have to be big. For the first year this book came out, my answer to that question was, I'm trying to get to 100 reviews on Amazon. That was it. No big thing. I just, if you, if you read the book, honest reviews appreciate it. That was my thing. Yeah. So that's one. The other is um, don't hesitate. We always say, have. Hmm? Yeah, say, say more about that. <laughs> more, it's, it's like 
at every single review is if you, you know, if they tell me they like the book, please, please put a review. Even yeah. if you don't like the book, please put a review. Mm-hmm. All, like all honesty is all appreciated. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't mind. Good or bad. Just write one. 10,000 copies out there and 75, 78 now reviews. I did break a hundred. I think I'm at 115 or something on the new book. Something You're like a that. goddess. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and I, and the funny thing is I had more reviews on this book than I had on this book. And this has been out for like nine years and has in 12 languages. And, you know, so it is, you just, people don't think of doing it. Um, so that's a, Ooh, that's a third thing. So think of doing it right. If we have that mindset, Laurel's laughing at me. Um, <laughs> if we have that mindset of, you know, what could I do to add value to somebody else. And instead of waiting for them to ask, offer it, like think of it and and say, well, Hey, here's something that might be of interest to you, or here's, you know, would you like to meet this person or, or, you know, could I give you a review on, on, on LinkedIn or whatever it might be. Um, but the other thing I was going to say about don't hesitate is somebody pops into your mind, right? It happens every day. Somebody just pops into your mind. And that's when I want you to not hesitate. I want you to take action immediately. And I know you can't, right? So what you're going to do instead is take your phone out and write their name in your calendar at the top as an all day event, just put their name Ooh, and, like that. and what will happen or put it on tomorrow because I want you to send that note. I want you to go to their Facebook and like something or comment on something or their LinkedIn or whatever it is, whoever that person is and however you're connected with them. It could simply be, here's an email saying, you popped into my head. I'm wondering what's going on with you. Let's catch up or send me an update. Here's what's going on with me. They don't have to be big. Yeah. I, I, I have a, a networking system that I created when I was looking for what, ended up being this job, um, <laughs> working with Morag and it's called two five fifteen, And that's a key component of it, right? It's, it's, that's, that's how you get to the number of, of reach outs that you're trying to target each day, right? When those people pop into your mind, that's what you do. You text them, you, you call them, you leave them a voicemail, right? And, and, and you, you say just that, right? Thinking about you today, Wondering how you're doing. Love to catch up sometime. No ask. No ask. That's what I call light touch. And I want to come back to the idea. But right now, Mariah is going to have to share her screen and show everybody that picture because there's like something really cool going on in the chat. (laughs) And we all want to see the garden, Mariah. I wasn't trying to be distracting. Sorry. No, no, no. I I want to see the garden. So (laughs) share your screen so we can all see it. So this was right after. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. So this was right after we had that f- hard freeze in September. So this huge ginormous tarp was covering the entire garden to save what we could because the tomatoes, which are on the right were green. And I actually have tomatoes all over. So they're in the center, in the front. It, I was trying to do more salsa. So there's lots of things. And then that ridiculously tall broccoli, that dark green <laughs> on the center, right? It didn't produce a damn thing, but leaves. So oh. But I kept it going. And the leaves actually are really, really good sauteed, like collard greens. So mm, mm-hmm. so it provided some hail shade for the cucumbers and stuff like that. But anyway, so that is that is my garden. In fact, in the back upper right corner, you can see my neighbor's two doors down. She used her pergola as her uh, space for her garden, and that's her plastic still up. Oh. Trying to save her. <laughs> so we, we exchanged uh, lots of hot peppers this year and, and stuff like that. So... I love it. I do not have a green thumb at all. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there you go, Jenny. Now you can see it. Thank you. It's awesome. Nice work. Thank you. Yeah, we went nice. more vertical this year because I overplanted it on purpose. I like I'm, the geckos. I'm very impressed. I do too. <laughs> so I've collected those forever. I used to have them on the wall in my house. And they since we moved <gasps> into this house four years ago, they've just been sitting in a box. So I said, let's put them outside. So I need more. How do they attach? Um, they have holes on the backside. They're all ceramic. Um, and so they have holes where you just put a nail and, and hang it. Oh, so, love so yeah. It. So you go to different merchantiles or whatever that I can find and, and they're there. See, this just I think makes actually me so happy. The far left one, my, one of my sisters made me too. <laughs> so. How cool. That's um, awesome. So like, here's a light touch in, you know, a few weeks, you can send a note to Mariah saying, how's the garden doing? Right. Did you get any broccoli dead right now? <laughs> <laughs> right. Or, or next summer you can say, what are you planting this year or next spring? 
right? That's what I mean. If she pops into your head and that garden pops into your head, which it will, you are going to get so many notes in the spring asking what you're planting. <laughs> <laughs> or did I get want... the seeds from China? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did not. Right. My si- yeah. One of my other sisters did. I have a lot of sisters, but one of oh. my uh, other sisters did. That's crazy. Wow. So, so sorry, I took us off track, but like, that's exactly what you want to create. Right. Um, I was going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to make us do it. Cause I know we don't have a lot of time left, but when we talked about, um, you know, how do we stay connected when we're in these boxes? Um, little things like I did this with a group in Australia last week. Um, they, they, it was actually a group of a CHR round table. And, um, they were talking about, you know, how do you develop relationship driven leaders and, and, how do we stay connected and onboard people? And I said, okay, so we want to get to know our new team members. So have everybody get 30 seconds, go run and find something in your house that helped you get through COVID. And everybody came back and I don't have my thing here anymore, but I showed them a jigsaw puzzle that my kids had gotten me for Mother's Day that was pictures of our year when we could leave the house. Um, you know, but a lot of people brought their pets and like the cat just stayed there for the rest of the thing and, um, you know, different things. And so it's, it's that insight. Like we just learned so much about Mariah and we feel more connected to her because she shared that. Um, and those little moments that we can create is it will last. It's that's what will stay with us more than anything else. That's, that's awesome. Well, I, I think, I think this is a, a TCB episode that most people are going to remember if they were here. We TCB. The corporate bartender. Oh, I was thinking TCBY. It's the 80s <laughs> reference. <laughs> and that's Every, where my head went. Everybody <laughs> loves Froyo. Everybody I think loves Froyo. got knocked off her chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. She's on the floor again. <laughs> oh, well, guys, do you have questions for Michelle? What questions are coming to mind for you? Sadly, I have to roll, but I cannot wait to watch these, this Q&A later on the, uh, <laughs> in the TCB archives. So uh, Michelle, ben. thank you so much for this. And I had it a second ago. I think I put it back on my shelf. But yes, you're awesome. I appreciate this. Um, <laughs> thank you for the kind words. It really made my night. And um, if you're interested in the follow-up, I'm doing this gift of connection. Did, um, did I send you that link? Just go ahead and pop it in the chat. Oh, man, you're going to make me like... Uh, type again you're working today (laughs) i'm really bad at oh michelle all right so i here's another thing if you are thinking about this holiday season reaching out to people and connecting with people or you have to give you a gift to your team i wanted to make it really easy so i'm doing this little package where you get the book and a bookmark and a personalized note and i autograph it as you want me to and i put in a nice little bag and i send it out for you and so if if you want to and some people are buying it for themselves and that's fine too i don't care but um i just love the idea of people open bumpy mail yeah Bumpy great. mail. Bumpy mail. Bumpy mail gets opened. That's awesome. All right. Thank you so much for that link. And I'll probably get one for myself. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Eric, Thanks for coming, buddy. Good to see everybody. You. Hi, Ben. Bye. Ask me All questions. Right. I love questions. So I'm, back. A, I'm a recruiter and I've been one for a very long time. And so I took the quiz and I'm an acting connector and I can relate to that right now because of the fact that I'm not at the super connector anymore. And that's because I've pulled back more. So it'll be interesting to see, uh, or it's, it's interesting to see where I have been and where I should, I need to go back to. It's if you want to, mm-hmm. mm. right? Yeah. Because, and that's, that's one of the things I want to say is not everybody needs to be a super connector. I mean, yes, there might be more advantages to being there, but you need to weigh it with what you need for you right now as well. And if being an acting connector is working for you, I would be very happy if the whole world was an acting connector. <laughs> right? It might be a little harder to cross over if we didn't have a few super connectors. But if everybody embodies these mindsets, we all rise. Right? And and I was talking to somebody else about... Um, the idea of abundance and, and competitors versus collaborators or partners. And I loved her response. She said, I just want to make a bigger pie. I'm not going to worry about my piece of it. Let's just make it bigger for all of us. Love it. So I have, I have a question for you, Michelle. How does, 
how does the connector and, you know, maybe striving for higher levels, how do you balance that with boundaries? Right. Because I know there's a lot of people that struggle with personal boundaries because they feel like they have to be there for everybody all the time. Right. So so how do you how do you coach people that maybe are too high on the spectrum and, and have lost their personal boundaries? OK, that is such a great question. And thank you for asking that. One of the mindsets of a connector is conscientiousness, which means connectors do what they say they're going to do. They follow up, they follow through. And part of being conscientious is understanding what you're willing to say yes to and what you're willing to say no to. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea of boundaries is also something I talk about in a generous spirit, because when we think about a generous spirit, um, we also need to be generous with ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and that's something that we are not very good at. Uh, one of the things I teach is how do we say yes and no without, you know, making it a one word answer, because um, it should probably never be a one word answer. Yes, if, yes, when, yes, with, yes, after. Yes, but. Yes, but. I like the no but, right? <laughs> right? Because the no but feels feels good, right? Because no doesn't feel good. But when you can say no but, it feels good. Like no but, there's a possibility of getting a yes down the road. Or no but, here's how I can help you. Or no but, right? And so it still feels good for everybody. The yes but makes me nervous, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But but I'm okay with it too. <laughs> Um, so it, the idea is to be really clear and, and I'll give you an example for me. I, you know, I'm asked to do, um, uh, talks a lot, like a lot of pro bono talks and it was really hard and I, I hard to, to say no. Cause it's like, you know, you're flattering me and, you know, <laughs> um, but I have two kids to put through college, you know, and, and there needs to be some balance. So I came up with criteria with which. I would say yes to a pro bono. And it had to do with the number of people in the audience, the distance from my home. They had to be a nonprofit. Um, there was, you know, things that I would ask. And then I would say, listen, if you can get this many people in the audience, then come back. Mm -hmm. Right. Or um, if you want to do a book purchase or right, or come back to me next year because I have only so many slots a year. And, and so it made it more comfortable for me to say no and let them know what the basis of that no was. Mm -hmm. And so giving yourself criteria and clarity around what you're willing to say yes to, what you're willing to say no to, and um, visual reminders are really helpful. So my husband for a year took a little sticky note and wrote the word no on it and stuck it on my monitor. And <laughs> it stayed there until the sticky wore off. But what it did was it reminded me that no is an option. Yeah. And I always told myself when I say no to this, I'm saying yes to something else. And even if that something else was sitting on the couch with my dog and my kids, exactly. that's what I was getting to say yes to. And so remind yourself that, that every yes um, comes with a no and every no comes with a yes. That's great. Thank you. That's Thank you for that awesome. question. That was a good one. <laughs> All right. One more question. Who's got a question? I'm playing the Jeopardy theme song in my head while I wait. <laughs> you are too good you. at this. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a frivolous one. A frivolous question. Excellent. Uh, my, um, my second grader is currently doing a school project on Siberian tigers. Everyone in her class was assigned a different animal. So if you have any specific resources or things that you really love that she should check out, I would, I would love to know. Oh, I really want to have an answer for you. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed in the picture, I was quite a bit younger there. Um, <laughs> I had raised some money for a um, sanctuary in Canada, and as a result of getting them grant money, I was granted access, um, and, and that's kind of how I got in. Um, but the World Wildlife Foundation is probably a website that you can go to because they do have a lot of facts. Um, my son is an animal lover, and um, for two nights of Hanukkah, my children choose two charities. Instead of getting gifts, oh. they give, and World Wildlife F Foundation is his charity of choice, and so... Um, they, they give you fact sheets about the animal that you choose to sponsor and things like that. So there's probably a lot of information on that website that can be useful for her. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Everybody loves Morag. I don't know your real name. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> and 
Sorry, I forgot to change that back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not beca- and I, but I feel that everyone does love Morag, so I don't want to take it down. <laughs> I have a, a step question on this, which is I look at myself and I'm really good at going deep with people really fast. I, I find out all kinds of things about people. Where I then struggle is to bridge what feels like a friendship to go to the ask. And so I wondered if you had some thoughts on that. I, I love that that you have this skill. And, um, you know, when you are in that conversation, by posing the question that I gave you before around what they're working on or what's important to them or, you know, how you can help, it invites them to ask that back. And if they don't, you can ask them the question of, you know, I'm so glad and, and here's our follow-up. And maybe you wait to that follow-up where you then do the thing that you said you're going to do in terms of adding value to them that you say, you know, may I share with you what I'm working on or what I'm focused on? And once you've kind of gone deep and you've created connection and you've added value, it's very unlikely that they're going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> And then, well, no, Laurel, but... Laurel might, Laurel might say no. <laughs> um, you know, and, and the thing is when you do that, we want to make sure that we don't make them feel bad for not having asked because what happens is, oh yes, of course. Um, and then you can say something like, I knew you were going to ask me, but I was so excited to share this. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause we don't want to make them feel bad because they didn't invite that information in because they might be an emerging connector and they haven't built that muscle memory around the ask yet. Right. Um, Thank you. That's or, really, really helpful. I'm going to give you one other tip. Um, Yay. And that's <laughs> the idea there is I keep getting a little feedback on that. Hopefully you guys are not. Um, mm-hmm. the, the idea is to ask advice. Right. So if we position something as a non ask. Right. Or um, as advice, it's not asking them to do something for us. It's you know, um, I would be curious, uh, this is something I'm working on. Have you have any experience or any ideas for me? So the way this sounded when I was, you know, launching my book, I have 30 experts as part of my book, right? They all contributed to the book. And in my conversations with them, before we got off, I'd say, you know, listen, you know, if they were an author, or even if they weren't, I would say, you know, you've done this before, or, um, you know, a lot of authors, any, you know, great tip that you have for making this a bestseller, Right. Or, you know, this is my goal. This is my my mission this year. What ideas do you have for me? Or, you know, would you help me brainstorm? Because when you tap into that advice idea and that brainstorm that they want to be valuable, they want to add value. It feels so good. And Mm. one of the things to remind ourselves is that when do you hear do you hear that? My, my, my son is, oh, okay, good. I'm so glad he's, he's jumping and running over my head right now. And the whole house is shaking. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, okay, it's not an earthquake. Um, um, I lost my train of thought very easily, but what I was saying is, um, when, when you invite somebody to do that, if, if you don't give them the chance to feel good of helping you, right, it yeah. makes it easier to ask for something when you're thinking, I give, I'm giving them the chance to have that great feeling because it does feel really good to feel valuable. And people do love to talk. I'm, I, I wouldn't know that at all. <laughs> oh, man, that was amazing. Thank you so much, Michelle, for hanging out with us today. Big ups to you. Big applause. <laughs> All right, let's let's get on to the funny stuff and get you guys on out of here. So funny things today. These are all 2020 funny things because there are meme competitions now for the best one. And it is a target rich environment. So uh, funny thing. Number one here. History essays in 2053. Explain the use and role of memes as a coping mechanism during the coronavirus pandemic of 2020. (laughs) Uh, This one is uh, seasonally appropriate to your home alone ordering pizza in 2020. Leave it on the doorstep and get the hell out of (laughs) here. You filthy bastard. You filthy bastard. You needed the last part of that. I I (laughs) knew you would add it. I knew you would add it. You love that movie. (laughs) (laughs) I love this one. What an absolute dystopian hell world we are living in. It's a COVID-19 testing site sign. With a Pepsi logo on it. Wow. It's near Walmart. 
Um, right. what? Yeah. What? <laughs> Is that yeah, what you have to do? Drink the- Pepsi. It's the Pepsi challenge for 2020. <laughs> Can you tell the difference? That means you've got COVID or you don't. One or the other. I can't taste a thing. You're right. <laughs> uh, this one made me laugh. I think 2020 is the historical equivalent of the tunnel boat scene in Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kids in 2055, when they see that there's a different history unit for every week of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, my favorite funny thing of the day, if 2020 was a plate of nachos. Uh Oh, Oh. <laughs> That might be my dinner if I don't get a wriggle on, but uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, today's feel good story. This is this is the world's worst cat. She's a four year old domestic short hair, and she was brought in after the death of her owner uh, to a shelter. And the staff quickly figured out her personality and they decided to go uh, with the honesty is the best policy approach. So this is the ad they wrote. Meet Perdita, not for the faint of heart. Likes, staring into your soul until you feel as if you may never be cheerful again. (laughs) The song Cat Scratch Fever, the movie Pet Cemetery, Church is her hero, jump scares, her specialty, lurking in dark corners, being queen of her domicile, forcing shelter staff into thinking she's sick. Vet agrees, she's just a jerk. (laughs) Dislikes, the color pink, kittens, they're too chipper, dogs, children, the Dixie Chicks, Disney movies, Christmas, and last but not least, hugs. She's single and ready to be... (laughs) She's single and ready to be socially awkward with a socially awkward human who (laughs) understands personal space. (laughs) She, she, She generated 50 responses, and these are her new loving owners, Perdita, the worst cat in the world. So she is the mascot for 2020. (laughs) Number two, she has the worst bang cut I've ever seen. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, the the only thing that would make that cat worse looking would be like the little Hitler mustache. That would be Yeah, yeah, the little black. (laughs) The little black spot. (laughs) Maybe paint some eyebrows on her or something. (laughs) (laughs) Like that butt cut. That's part of the metal. Oh yeah! Oh, wow. You body shaming the cat. <laughs> kind of. That, I'm that's, going to hell. Yeah, that's we, that's we all are. Any version of there, there was a dog. This got to be ten years ago now, and it had been trained as a um, an assist for blind people, and failed with its first blind owner. And then failed with its second blind owner when they realized this dog intentionally walked its blind masters over open manhole covers. Oh my God. Up two of them down the open manhole. That that dog's an assassin. (laughs) Wow. I want to know about the person who trained it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just a warped sense of humor. It wasn't me this time. Today's today's semi quarantine cocktail is just well aliens. It's a <laughs> riff on the cranberry old fashioned. So I don't know if you guys saw the article uh, that populated yesterday across most news platforms. Started I think in the Jerusalem Post. Uh, Hayam Ashad was the head of the Israeli space security force uh, for thirty yeah. years. Mm-hmm. Thirty years, right? So. Dude knows a lot of stuff. So anyway, this is a riff on the cranberry old fashioned. It takes three ounces of bourbon whiskey, one galactic federation with which we've been dealing for years. One ounce of cranberry simple syrup, uh, a secret base on Mars, complete with Americans. Uh, Three shakes of Angostura bitters. Um, Space Force makes a whole lot more sense to me now. Little orange peel, little cranberry, little rosemary. Uh, also, Trump That's Rosemary's the- baby. <laughs> <laughs> In the article, he says that Trump knows of these aliens and the Federation stopped him from letting the cat out of the bag <laughs> on more than one occasion. Well, fuck. What? And Stacy, do that? This, this is for you, Stacy. I'm ready. Look at the screen. I am. <gasps> yeah! 
Yes. <laughs> Borgio Sulacos. <laughs> Stacy has a thing for the ancient aliens. <laughs> they just came out with a new season. <laughs> no, that's just in time for the holidays, everybody. <laughs> He's got the best hair, even better than the little cat. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. Michelle, thank you. This was amazing. Easily one of my top five favorite TCB episodes. Mm -hmm. Guys, buy her book. Connect with her on socials. How do, where do we Write find Write a review. Book, <laughs> yeah, write, write a review. Read the book first. Where do we find you, Michelle, out on the socials? Um, the, you know, the best place to start is my website. So the link that has the gift of connection, um, if you stop at .com, that's my website. From there, you can link into me. Um, the Facebook professional, you know, you already saw my hair in the 80s. You don't need to see more. Um, Twitter, Instagram, I'm on all of them. Uh, I've got a blog. I've got a YouTube channel. Um, I've got a weekly newsletter with tips and tricks and videos and things like that, um, and that you can that if you sign up, you get a whole bunch of other things like free chapters to books and um, a video series and things like that. So um, I tell me that you saw me on TCB, not TCBY. <laughs> um, and I welcome connecting with all of you. That's awesome. The, the newsletter is great. Um, I hate newsletters and I get three of them and one of them is yours. So. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, this was awesome. thanks everybody. Thanks. thanks. Nice to meet everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you had a good time and learned a thing or two at today's happy hour, please share it with your friends. If you want to join our tribe, head on over to skyteam.cloud forward slash TCB or email us at info at skyteam.com. That's S-K-Y-E team.com. Thanks again. And remember, you always got friends at the corporate bartender. <laughs>